Among the soldiers of history, the samurai is one of the most prestigious and dangerous. So let's pit two of the best of them in a fight to the death. Samurai Jack, the warrior prince lost in time. And Afro Samurai, who's one cold-blooded mother ever. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Long ago, in a distant land, Aku, the shape-shifting master of darkness, unleashed an unspeakable evil. But a foolish samurai warrior wielding a magic sword stepped forth to oppose me. I, I mean him. And that nameless samurai became known as... Jack. Jack! Jack was out! Jack! Jack! Yo! Jack! Jack was Jack! 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 Jack. Doesn't really strike fear into your enemies. Young Jack was the son of a Japanese emperor who had imprisoned Aku years before. However, upon Aku's return, the emperor and his army were quickly defeated. The last of all hope remained in the hands of his son. Oh, look how small he is! <clears throat> well, uh, to prep for beating the snot out of Aku, little Jack traveled the world, training with the best of the best. Most notably, he learned horseback riding from a sheik, staff fighting in Africa, wrestling from gladiators, axe throwing from a Russian boyar, mounted combat from the Mongols, martial arts from Shaolin monks, and... And archery from freaking Robin Hood! You know, everyone's favorite talking fucks. Ooh, da lolly. Wrong Robin Hood. That's your opinion. Jack's progress was exceptional. At just eight years old, he defended a whole village from a band of marauders. All oh, before he could even legally drink the good stuff. 17 years later, he was ready for the final boss. He just needed one more thing. His pajamas. No, 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 his katana. Katana, pajama, tomato, alfredo, it's all the same. But before Jack could put his training to good use, Aku pulled a bitch move and zapped him hundreds of years into the future. Watch out. What a waste. Just like when you spend four sleepless years struggling through college and then find out too late that nobody cares about your English major. I thought you graduated from the school of evil science or something. Well, you still have to pick a major. Should have chosen a more practical one, Wiz, like mine. Anyway, even though he was trapped in the future, Jack stuck to his mission to get back to the past and take down Aku. And he had the right weapon for the job. See, Aku cannot be harmed by conventional means. Thus, a special blade was forged by gods from Norse, Egyptian, and Hindu pantheons. This mystic sword is nearly unbreakable and absolutely incorruptible. And boy, is Jack's katana an extremely effective weapon. It can absorb and redirect energy, including fire, vaporize beings of evil, and slice through nearly any substance, even adamantium. The Wolverine Super Metal? Why is that there? Uh, probably just coincidental naming, but it is shown to be stronger than steel. Of course it is. So the sword's pretty awesome, but so is Jack. He's strong enough to push over this giant pillar, tough enough to survive a fall from orbit, and fast enough to defeat six bounty hunters in the time it took for one drop of water to hit the ground. By timing the drop, all this had to have taken place in about one third of a second. He's like a ninja samurai. Ninja Mirai. Actually, he is trained in ninjutsu, which probably helped when he was forced to dodge beams of sunlight. For this one in particular, it's clear Jack began dodging after the beam was fired. By examining both Jack and the beam's movement frame by frame, we've concluded his highest reaction speeds must be nearly 70% the speed of light. Damn, that's fast. What can he do? Next thing you'll tell me, he has the power to fly or something. Well, Jack can't fly, but he did learn how to... Jump curb. Uh, yes, that. By strapping a giant boulder on his back, which compared to his height we can determine to weigh 39 tons, Jack learned how to leap high enough to clear these trees. Crouching tiger hidden samurai! These trees are pretty big, and this jungle has a bunch of these ugly baboons running around. And if I were a betting man, which I am, I'd say that this is the African rainforest, where the average tree is about 130 feet tall. Tibs on Jack for my basketball team. Guy's got hops. We haven't even mentioned the time he survived several exploding missiles with his friend, the Scotsman. Hmm. Why does he look so familiar? Well, I like him. With so much talent, it was only a matter of time until Jack found his way home and defeated Aku once and for all. But it took a lot longer than it probably should have. 50 years, in fact. 
yeah, good thing time travel makes you stop aging for some reason. But Jack's a good-hearted soul, like a Boy Scout who hasn't discovered Twitter yet. He can be pretty gullible when it comes to more devious opponents. Also, he continues to prolong his lonely journey over and over just because he frequently puts the needs of others before his own. Still, the forces of evil should watch out for Samurai Jack. The stories that surround the two sacred headbands are as many as the men who died in their pursuit. What's so special about some strips of headcloth? Legend says they were created by the gods, or they can grant the wearer supernatural powers. But in truth, the headbands only bring pain and loss. Such was the case with Afro Samurai. <laughs> Wait! Did his parents really call him Afro? Talk about setting big expectations. Well, no, it's a nickname, but even if they did, have you seen his dad? I think they knew what to expect. Damn, just look at it. Oh, and hey look, he's got the number one headband. Here's how this works. The person who wears the number one headband is said to rule the world. And the only person who can challenge the number one is whoever possesses the number two. In contrast, anybody can challenge the owner of the number two for the right to wear that headband, and thus gain the right to challenge the number one. So, like, you just work your way up so that only one guy in the world can challenge you? So where do I get one of these headbands? Then no one will mess with me. Actually, the opposite would probably happen, which young Afro witnessed firsthand when some freak named Justice showed up with the number two and killed his father right in front of him. Why does this always happen? You know, I always thought parenting was the hardest thing about being a dad, but at this point, I think it's just actually staying alive if your kid's ever gonna do anything great. Or just sticking around for them. Despite knowing that he was effectively creating a future challenger, Justice left Afro alone to mourn his loss. So, of course, Afro swore revenge and started learning swordsmanship under a swordmaster named Swordmaster! Who the hell is naming these people? Through Swordmaster's training of sword mastery, Afro learned the traditional samurai fighting styles of Kenjutsu and Kendo. Kenjutsu is all about how to kill an opponent as fast as possible, while Kendo is more about discipline and being zen and stuff. Naturally, Afro preferred the more kick-ass one. Right, Swordmaster's goal was to refine Afro's body and mind, instilling upon him a sense of honor, or Bushido but that didn't quite mesh with Afro's thirst for vengeance. So when he found out that Swordmaster had the number two headband all along, he knew what he had to do. And now he could take down the guy who killed his dad. Alongside his new friend slash burden, Ninja Ninja. Oh, come the f on. Where'd this guy come from? Now don't we look like shit. How you been, man? Well, it's not entirely clear. He's there, but at the same time, not there. Ninja Ninja is believed to be the guardian of the number two headband, but all he ever really does is talk, talk, and talk some more. He got arrows and grenades and shit! You ain't got no chance, dude! Though it's also possible Ninja Ninja is simply a figment of Afro's mind, brought about by psychological stress. You know, I have an imaginary friend. Aren't you a little old for that? Not for Al Gundy! He's a gun who also talks to me. He tells me to do stuff. Okay. Anyway, to be honest, calling Afro a samurai is a bit misleading. He's actually more akin to a ronin, a samurai with no master. And so, with his swordsmanship perfected, Afro wandered the world searching for justice, carrying an arsenal fit for revenge. Including his father's sword. This super long blade has lasted through decades of battle without much issue. Perfect for kicking some ass. He also has a steel comb, which can be a surprisingly effective offensive and defensive tool. And since he doesn't care about that honor BS, he's not afraid to play dirty by attacking with his sandals. But while on the road to justice, Afro's number two headband attracted all manner of dangerous enemies. Luckily, he's more than capable of dealing with each and every one of them. He's strong enough to cut other swords in half, throw his sheath through another guy's throat, and even tear off metal arms. Pretty impressive, as many modern metals have tensile strength as high as 80,000 pounds per square inch. Avro is fast enough to cut bullets out of thin air, and even a laser beam. I should note that it's not a plasma-based beam. 
it bounces off reflective surfaces, doesn't explode upon contact, and it's literally labeled a laser. This means Afro blocked a beam that moved as fast as light, more than 670 million miles per hour. Get this, that laser beam came from a robot version of Afro. Talk about metal, this Afro droid could easily smash up a car, and our boy Afro just tore it apart. He survived getting hit by rockets, including this RPG that fragmented a giant cliff face. A RPG in a backpack? <laughs> I think I smell math coming. This tree nearby is most likely a Japanese mountain ash, which can sometimes grow as high as 30 feet. With that in mind, we compared its height to the fragmentation created by the explosion, and compared the resulting surface area to the sheer force for granite. With this, we deduce the RPG's highest possible explosive yield must be around 72 tons of TNT. Damn, what kind of mega rocket launcher are these guys packing? And where do I get it? Many stood in his way, and Afro didn't get through them all unscathed. But by the end, he cut down justice, took his revenge in hand, and proved to the world that Afro Samurai is number one. Why you gotta kill all my men? Why you gotta kill me? Nothing personal. It's just revenge. All right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. But first, looking at these swords makes me want to sharpen my knives for my Blue Apron meal tonight. By now, you've probably heard of Blue Apron, the leading meal kit delivery service in the US. But did you know about all the different kinds of delicious foods you can make? Like the honey chipotle glazed chicken with poblano and lime rice. There's plenty to choose from, since they offer 12 new recipes each week. All you have to do is choose the two, three, or four that sound best to you, and they deliver it right to your door. Plus, it's super simple to cook. It's got easy to follow instructions and perfectly proportioned ingredients. They're non-GMO, and the meat has no added hormones. My favorite part is feeling like a master chef, making creative and delicious meals with my own hands. You guys really need to try it out. It's pretty nice coming home knowing I'll have a delicious meal I can whip up with ease. So check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free at blueapron.com slash battle. That's blueapron.com slash battle to get your first three meals free. But right now, it's time for a death battle! Your sword smells of blood. So does yours. Fight! Jump good. Oh, uh, thank you.
like, is he gonna get his arm back, or...? Afro was an exceptional warrior, and his skills would absolutely dominate most sword fights. However, Jack has had a lot of experience with opponents who fight dirty, and Afro could not stand up to his physical superiority. Yeah, Afro never showed strength like how Jack lifted that 39-ton boulder. Jack could react as fast as 70% the speed of light. Afro did block that light speed laser beam, but based on the distance between him and the Afro droid, he only needed to react around 21% the speed of light to do this, still putting him at impressive relativistic speeds, but not even half as quick as Jack. Also, while Afro survived that mega-sized RPG explosion, don't forget how Jack survived a fall from orbit. While it does seem the spacesuit was responsible for Jack surviving re-entry, it certainly can't be held solely accountable for the final impact. Starting his descent from the Kármán line, or the boundary between Earth's atmosphere and space, Jack covered a distance of 62 miles in just under 7 seconds, moving well over terminal velocity. Thanks to being propelled by exploding space beam! Which means his top velocity was approximately 37,000 miles per hour. Adding the spacesuit's weight to his own, this means his impact force must have equaled about 19 megatons of force. Way more than anything Afro survived. And then he just got up and walked away. Badass. In the end, Jack was just too fast, too strong, too tough, and too well trained for Afro to... <clears throat> handle. The winner is Samurai Jack. Thanks for watching. If you guys want exclusive commentary on the episode, just click that little box right over there. And if you want the battle music from this episode, you can get it by clicking the link in the description.